Victoria Steiner. I'm here today because I wouldn't be any place else on earth. We are taking democracy back. I mean, let's face it, it doesn't say I, the president, at the beginning of the Constitution. It says we, the people. And actually, I've lived a long time, but I've never seen an outpouring of energy quite like this. You know, the Vietnam War was crucial, but it was sort of more youth-oriented because it was about the draft. And, uh, you know, issues, things have been about a particular issue in Washington. But this is more capacious and more about who makes decisions in general. President Trump won, though, maybe not the popular vote, maybe mm -hmm. down almost three million, but he did win the he system won. we have, he the Electoral won. College. No, it's not. It, he won by the Electoral College, which was originated by the slave states. He also lost seven million other votes voting for other candidates other than the two man, male, the main candidates. Uh, so by no calculation is he my president. So what does that mean right now? How are you going to take him on? It's not only Donald Trump. There is a majority Republican House and Senate. They're vowing to take down Planned Parenthood, to defund it, to repeal the Affordable Care Act. How are you going to do this? Well, one day at a time. <laughs> For instance, if they defund Planned Parenthood and defund NPR, we can take that money out of our income tax, put a note with our return saying, sorry, I've sent it where it should go, come and get me. If enough people do that, it's very difficult to do anything about it. We did it uh, in the Vietnam era, and then we just, it was more difficult in a way because we were just keeping the money. This is more positive because we're actually giving the money where it should go. There may well be that there are many more people here today mm -hmm. at the Women's March on Washington than there were at Donald Trump's inauguration, though he said it was going to be the biggest, I can't remember the word but he used, hugest but he um, inauguration Trump yet. Trump doesn't know any word except a superlative word to describe anything related to him or anything he does. Um, on CNN, one of their paid commentators, uh, sort of while snickering, said, if you were to talk to these protesters, I don't think they have a coherent agenda. They're just here to make <laughs> trouble. <laughs> no, we're here to make progress, a different piece. So how do people's movements do that? Where do you go from here? It's hard to answer that question in the general because where you go is in the specific. It depends, for instance, what happened. For instance, when they tried to eliminate the Ethics Committee, people descended on Congress and they had to reinstate the Ethics Committee. So it is one step at a time, or multiple steps at a time, but we are not looking up at him, we're looking at each other where we're strong. Speaking of steps, the Rockettes, when it was announced that they were going to perform at one of the inaugural balls, a number of them took uh, very big steps. They wrote to each other privately on Facebook and said no. Right. There was so much backlash that the union in Madison Square Garden, which owns them, uh, was forced to say they wouldn't be required to dance. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to sort of dance but half they, naked in front of a president who they right, thought was the, a sexual but abuser. The, but the you don't have to be required to dance is not a backlash, it is a frontlash. Because up to that point, they were supposed to all do it together. And the union was backing off and saying, no, 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 only if you agree. The World Food Program apparently issued a letter to everyone around the world who works for them and said, you can't participate in these marches. You can't take a political <coughs> stand. Mm -hmm. But there was such a backlash that the head of the World that. Program, uh, World Food Program, had just issued another letter saying, yeah, you can march. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's exactly the same thing. And you know, we're just not asking daddy anymore because it's the wrong daddy. <laughs> what does it mean to defund Planned Parenthood? Uh, you know, Planned Parenthood is, of course, necessary to women's health in this country. Uh, a very, what, 1% of it goes toward abortion. It does everything we know, breast exams and everything else. So it would be incredibly expensive to every emergency room in the nation if they were not able to serve women and men in the way that they do. Therefore, 
if they defund it, we'll take money out of our income tax and send it direct.